the next breakthrough in the atom theory was made by Niels Bohr in 1913 and the model is called the Bohr model. He built his model totally on Rutherford's model that, as we had learned, uh, consists of uh, four statements. Nearly all mass of the hydrogen atom is in a small nucleus, and the nucleus are proton and neutron. The hydrogen atom is mostly empty space, and the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons for the neutral atom. And the electron of hydrogen moves around the nucleus in an orbit. Niels Bohr built his model on the Rutherford model. However, he added one very important feature. He explained on the basis of the atom structure, how colors of this world come about. It was well known in 1913 that colors have properties of waves. And the wavelengths, for instance, for red color, is in the 700 nanometer range while the violet is in the 400 nanometers. However, it was, there was no explanation why some objects have red colors and other objects have yellow, blue, and so on. Now let's have a look how the Bohr Double left click on Bohr orbits under the name Niels Bohr and you can see the Bohr model. Immediately you see the difference to the Rutherford model. Instead of one orbit, the Bohr model has several orbits. Let's have a look what these orbits are for. On the left hand side you have a light source like a lamp that can send monochromatic light on the hydrogen atom. Monochromatic light is light with all light has the same wavelengths. Let us shine monochromatic light with a wavelength of 656 nanometers on the hydrogen atom and please observe what happens. Here you see one, two and now watch what happens. The electron is kicked into a different orbit and then it falls back and emits red light. Let us do that again. We shoot red light and now it hits, the, the red light hits the electron. Then the electron falls back and emits red light. Let's do that now with green light, which has 486 nanometers. And what you can see is the electron is kicked into the green orbit. Now we want to shoot light with a wavelength of 434 nanometers at the hydrogen atom. And please predict where the electron will go after it is hit by blue light with a wavelength of 434 nanometers. So we do this now, we shoot, and it goes into the blue orbit, and we do not show this here in the simulation, blue orbit, and then it falls back 
into the original orbit, releasing blue light. Now let us emit light or shine light on the hydrogen atom in the wavelengths 410 nanometers. This is in the violet range, which you can see here. And please predict what will happen to the electron. The electron is orbiting before it is hit by the, uh, by the photon. And when it is hit by the photon with a wavelength of 410 nanometers, it will go into another orbit and which is essentially the largest orbit there and then it will fall back emitting a violet photon itself. So here and it emits a photon. Now let us shine light with a wavelength of 600 nanometer at the hydrogen atom. And let's see what happens. And it hits the electron, but nothing happens. The electron does not react. So this is a very important insight. You see here we are shooting yellow light at the hydrogen atom and when the photon hits, the yellow light photon hits the hydrogen electron, nothing happens. We want to study in more details what we have just seen. Double click on the red round button with a question mark and also on the button orbits under Niels Bohr. The first observation is when no light shines, the electron remains in its smallest orbit. To put the a hydrogen atom into a, small, a dark room where absolutely no light shines and the electron should orbit around. This is called the ground state. In the ground state, the electron orbits around the nucleus in the smallest orbit the closest to the nucleus. The second observation is we se select light as a wave with a wavelength, for instance, lambda equals 656 nanometer, but our lamps emits particles. So light is measured in wavelengths and nanometers and here you have 656 nanometers. By the way, by accident I had 434, but now it will be only wave with a wavelength of 656 nanometers, which is red light. But we show it as particles. It is a bull, it looks like a bullet. It is like a particle. It moves, this particle moves maybe in waves, but it is a particle. Now let's look at a wavelength of 410 nanometers, so less lengths of the wave, and you can see that it appears like a particle. This is called wave-particle duality. We need to learn what wave-particle duality means. The third observation is one photon of light 
with the same wavelengths, for instance, lambda equals 656 nanometer, moves one electron always into the same orbit. So we shoot red light, by the way, again, blue light by accident. So now we are shooting only red light. And every time you shoot red light at the electron, it will go into the red orbit. Always into the same orbit. That is observation number three. So for instance, if we choose a wavelength of 486 nanometers, which is green light, the electron will always go into the green orbit. It will never be, if it gets hit by a green photon, it goes into the green orbit. It will never go into a blue orbit. The fourth observation is, the larger the wavelength lambda of the light, the smaller the new orbit. The larger the wavelength lambda of the light, the smaller the new orbit. We start with 656 nanometers, and you can see that it goes into the red orbit, which is the next one to our ground state here, 656. Now we reduce the wavelengths to 486, we get green light, and it goes into a larger orbit. Now we reduce the wavelengths even more to blue light, and the electron goes into the larger orbit, which is larger than the green orbit. The next reduction is to 410. This gives us nearly violet light, and it gets us into the largest orbit in our model here. The fifth observation is an excited electron, that means an electron that has absorbed a photon, emits a photon of light with the same wavelengths it had previously absorbed and falls back into the ground, its ground state. We shoot an, okay, let's watch it again it falls back, emits a photon. 656 nanometer, it hits the electron, it is absorbed by the electron. Now it falls back and you see it emits a photon. Let's do that with 410 nanometers. Sorry, I got it again wrong. I got first on 486. Whenever you put, okay, 410 nanometers, it goes into the orbit, and now watch what happens. An electron is admitted. Let's do it again for 434 nanometers blue. It goes into the, and now watch. A photon is emitted and the electron falls back into its ground state. So, absorbs a blue electron, a photon, not electron. The electron absorbs a blue photon goes into the larger orbit, emits a blue photon, and falls back into its ground state. And the last observation is only light with a specific wavelength is absorbed by the hydrogen atom. Of the visible light, hydrogen absorbs light with a wavelength of 656 nanometers, 486 nanometers, 434 nanometers, and 410 nanometers. But it will not absorb any light with a different wavelength. So shoot 
600 nanometer at light at the hydrogen atom and nothing will happen. Only if you pick out of the visible light one of those four wavelengths, the hydrogen atom will react. On the right hand, you see this the spectrum of the visible light. It starts at below 400 and goes below above the 700 nanometer range. The, low, the highest wavelength is the red and the lowest is the violet. Below 400 nanometers you get into the ultraviolet range and above 700s you get into the infrared range. Ultraviolet light and infrared light cannot see, be seen by the human eye. We added that spectrum to our simulation just to give you an idea about the wavelengths of the visible light. However, it had no effect on our simulation and when you saw photons going in to the right hand side and it hit somewhere on the spectrum, it does not mean anything. So forget about that uh, spectrum on the right hand side.